as I've said, at this initial stage, <laughs> at this initial stage, all of these graphs, you don't need addition or subtraction of ordinates to do these, okay? However, the whole point is to try and practice these skills so actually you can understand better what is going on. So, example. Hopefully we know by factorizing, right, that I could just write this as this. So I, it's a parabola. I know exactly where the roots are going to go. Uh, I know it's concave up, not concave down, and on and on and on. So I could make that argument. But what I'm trying to do is trying to understand this through a different lens. This will become even more important when we look at reciprocals, okay? So, you can see on the um, green graphs, I've broken it apart into its components. So really, I'm dealing with these two guys, okay? Now watch as I approach with the same process, because in some ways, right, for a lot of us, like, coming up with the graph of this is magic. It's magic, by which I mean, like, why is it? Could you explain to, like, a six-year-old kid why you get that shape? And you're just like, well, that's just because it's the shape you get. Like, it's so part of the way you think now, okay? Now, to your credit, you probably could logic it out a little bit. You could play why roots are roots and so on. But I can approach it a completely different way. So let's do it by addition of ordinance. Firstly, important points. What do you reckon is the most important point on here? I'd probably say the origin, right? Because, look, at that point, both graphs are equal to zero. So when I add them together, zero. the ordinates I get are zero. Bam. Okay. In exactly the same way, just sort of moving over a little bit, right? There is going to be a point where this positive and this negative are exactly equal to each other and therefore will cancel, right? So I know I've seen this before. I guess it'll be somewhere like, I don't know, maybe there, okay? So I'm gonna pop that value in there. And I happen to know the actual value is equal to two. Okay? And by the way, uh, you can do that numerically, right? You want this and this to be equal, right? Or this and this to be opposite. So 2 squared, negative 4. Bam, you're there. Okay? So now I know I'm here and here. Now let me think about this. Let's do the easy part first. Over on the left, right? Over on the left. I'm going to think about it from left to right so I can use my increasing and decreasing language, right? For my component functions, from left to right, what's y equals negative 2x? Is it increasing or decreasing? It's decreasing. What about x squared? Decreasing. Also decreasing. They're both decreasing. So when you put together two things that are decreasing, they will both decrease even faster. Does that make sense? They're both going to be coming down. On the right-hand side, this is a bit trickier, right? Um, have a look at this little spot in between here, right? What is increasing and what is decreasing? Now my question is, which one is more important? Which one is increasing or decreasing more than the other one? Like a tug of war. Who's pulling harder? Okay, okay now, now, if we look at this very carefully and slowly, this is the whole point of thinking about this in a different way. Right at the beginning, the straight line is pulling harder, right? The reason you can do that is because right there, at that point, the parabola's not pulling at all. The gradient would be zero, right? And then it lifts off quite quickly, as you can see. But for that brief moment, this guy down here, the pulling, the decreasing, is decreasing harder. So that's why it comes down, right? But then eventually the parabola wakes up and he says, well, okay, I better start pulling. And he quickly outpaces him, right? So that's why it decreases for a short amount, but then it increases again as this guy starts to pull harder. Does that make sense? Now, think for a second, what's the gradient? I'm now going to talk in actual numbers. What's the gradient of this line? Minus two. It's negative two, right? So there's an exact point, and you can find it, where the gradient of this parabola is the opposite, two. And that's the break-even point, right? When this guy is pulling at two, and this one is pulling at negative two, they will cancel. And we call that a stationary point, right? But well, isn't that one? Because, yes. Okay. They are pulling. They are pulling in exactly opposite directions at exactly the same amount, right? Because their gradients are opposites to each other. Does that make sense? So if they're pulling in opposite directions, exactly the same amount, they're not moving anywhere. They're stationary. Does that make sense? Which of course we know is it going to be exactly halfway between the roots because parabolas are symmetrical. Does that make sense? Do you see how I logic that out in a completely different way from saying, well, a parabola has a vertex and it's supposed to be there? Okay. I'm trying to think about how the graphs are behaving together. And lastly, uh, over here on the right, well, this guy's well and truly taken over, hasn't he? He's increasing, he's decreasing, but he's never going to catch up because he's always pulling the same rate, okay? So therefore, that's how you get this shape that's going to increase forever. And we already know what's happening over on the left-hand side, like so, okay? Does it make sense? So probably you were always expecting, but we thought about it, we approached it a very different way.